You know, Fire Emblem, most people call that nighttime. So today we're going to be going up against a guy that we've never actually seen before. We've heard of him, but yeah, he's not really had any sort of development. We don't know anything about him as a character. I mean, they'll try to shoehorn something in at last moment, but nonetheless, we've heard of him a couple of times, and while Mesa Dawn has always been kind of a constant threat throughout the game, I really want to see him more. Why, why didn't the game let us see the villains more often? That would have been good. I'd, I'd like to see them at least once. It would have been nice. I mean, come on. We only saw Camus once before we met him on the battlefield, and that was an optional village thing. We haven't seen Macaulay before. Heck, we wouldn't have seen Jeel before we actually fought him, if not for the fact that the prologues exist. Right, so this chapter's okay, but, uh... His unit placement is kind of weird. Of course, we've got a whole lot of flyer units, because why wouldn't we? This is the land of Pegasus Knights and Draco Knights, so... Yep, their Dragoons are going to be coming at us from full force, but of course, they've also got some bow users to back them up. Our goal this time around, of course, will be that village in the top right. Godo did say he'd be waiting in a village to the north, so... Since the other side just has shops and armories, we are going to have to go to the right. Unless, of course, Goto actually lives in a shop, which, you never know, maybe he does. Yeah, that would be great. Why doesn't anybody do that? Yeah, good job, you screwed it all up. You killed your father, and now you're working with humankind killing dragons. How many times do I have to remind everyone about this? You know, these dragons really hate humanity, kind of bitter about us, want to kill everyone. Yeah, it's something you probably want to keep in mind when you're a human. Yeah, Camus thought the same thing about Grust, and now he's gone, so yeah, that mindset doesn't really help at all. You know, I actually don't know. I hadn't thought about it. Look, I really don't like Marth. Like, at all. After that, I'm just gonna be winging it. Nah, get it winging it, cause I'm a dragon knight. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh. So, I guess McCullough isn't completely evil. It's just... he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> I really don't understand his motivations. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't actually mind you, Goto, too much. But, nonetheless, I'm still gonna do the wrong thing, cuz... Why not? You know, Marth... I don't like his, um, uh, his, his cape. Yeah, that's it. See that cape? It sucks and I hate it. And that's why I'm going to kill him. So anyway, foolish people aside, this chapter can be kind of difficult, uh, mostly for the people on the right side. I do split the party here, and that's a little bit of a mistake, considering the party that goes to the left basically runs into nobody. They get almost nothing done. They take the safe path up the mountain. Now, that being said, it's not the best to send your entire party to the right, because there's not much space to move around here, so it's a little bit cluttered. That being said, having units to spare might not be a bad idea. But of course, you definitely want to go around this way, because it's the fastest way to get to the village. Now, if you think you can actually stand up to several Draco Knights and Pegasus Knights, and maybe a few Cavaliers, or, uh, not Bow Knights, uh, Hunter... Horsemen. Why can I never remember that? But anyway, yeah, if you think you have a unit that can stand up to all of those guys, you could just warp a unit up to the village to protect it, because 
that thief is actually pretty close by to the village. It doesn't take him too long to actually travel from there to the village. It might not look like it. You know, he, he might look like he's a fair distance away, but he gets there fast. Now, of course, the problem with charging straight forward is there's a lot of resistance and it's all heading towards us pretty damn quickly. So, um... I know earlier I mentioned, oh well, you know, Draco Knights have two weaknesses. You can bow them to death or you can book them to death. That being said, their defense being good still counts for a lot. So, the fact that there are a whole lot of them coming at us, uh, we're not in trouble per se, but things could be better, admittedly. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for this side. Yes. And now you can see why I, why I want to get rid of the uh, clerics before I get rid of all the Wavern Riders and Pegasus Knights. A Ballista is very useful for that sort of thing, but at the same time, getting rid of their healers is really, really good. Because basically every enemy strategy from... Shoot, what? when did this even start? Because for a while now... Basically, all the enemies were just like, okay, uh, we kind of need somebody with a Fortify Staff in every battle. Because otherwise, we just won't be able to keep our units healed. And every battle since then has been, well, just that. It's just been a whole lot of Fortify Spam. If you don't kill an enemy by the end of the turn, well, they're probably going to get at least part of their health back. Good job there, Lorenz. Good job. Actually, to be fair, it probably would have been a good idea to use the Geosphere. I mean, I have it on me, but that's really more just for show. I don't actually plan on using it. I mean, if it can break, I want to conserve it. Otherwise, what if I need it and it breaks before then? I mean, I wouldn't let it break because then it would disappear from my inventory. But after that, you know... Even then, I'd have it at one use, you know, it's a little close for comfort, you know, because it's at one away from breaking, well, that's not good at all. Alright, but anyway, yeah. So, you might also notice that I am having Linde slow down on the whole using aura constantly thing, because we are going to be giving away our sphere, well, two of our three spheres. He doesn't want the Geosphere. And see what I mean? That thief is already getting really close to the village, but yeah. Uh, Goda's gonna take away two of our spheres once we visit the village, so make sure to have those on Marth. But yeah, after that we lose it. We do gain a powerful spell, but it doesn't have that much durability, so it's not gonna be that much use to Linde. So yeah, we're gonna be at a bit of a disadvantage from this point onwards, and that's why I got rid of it from Linde, because... I might as well have it go to Marth sooner rather than later. Even though she probably just could reach the village and then pass it on to him or something, but nah, whatever. I don't know how to do things. If I knew how to do things, why'd I be here in this situation? But on that note, though, I'm not going to be visiting that village until the end of the chapter. Because you might have noticed that it is actually in Minerva's hands now. That is, of course, so I can use Hot to Clear a whole lot, because this is Minerva's chapter, basically. Even if she's not the strongest, and she's a little lower than I'd like to be, than I'd like her to be strength-wise. She is still going to be the driving force in this chapter. I'm going to be getting rid of a whole lot of units with her. And, of course, she's going to be going up against her brother, McCallus who, by the way, has an Iote shield. Want to know what that does? It negates arrow attacks. So, yeah, he doesn't have the usual archer weakness. You might have noticed, though, that it was also green, so of course he's going to drop it once you kill him. So yeah, one of our two flyer units that we use frequently is going to be protected from arrow attacks, so you can be a lot more daring with Pegasus Knights at that point. It is a fairly reoccurring item. Uh, sometimes it's called different things, like in the Game Boy Advance games it was called the Delphi Shield, but it's always useful because not having that weakness means they can just go wherever, go wherever they want on the map. I mean, on one hand, they might not have the best stats, but at the same time, it's not terrible because 
you can just fly anywhere you want, basically, so you got free reign over the battlefield provided you don't get swarmed by other units, and that's always an advantage. Of course, it's generally a very late game item, and it's usually not the best strategically, like Pegasus units, uh, at least in my experience, like having them cross the entire field in one turn wouldn't be as useful uh, in the chapters where you actually get the shield than it would be in earlier ones. Where in earlier ones, if you look around, they kind of just have like uh, archer units placed around and strategic positions so that you can't just go to the end of the chapter and wipe the boss off the map with a Pegasus Knight immediately. Because that would kind of just break the game. That being said, though, we can finish you off. Alright, and the threat of the thief is gone. And I don't think any thieves will spawn at this point, so we're more or less safe. Which means, um, we are pretty mu Oh, well, <laughs> I forgot about Maria, which was not good because now she's way behind distance-wise. And that's not good at all. Because I want her healing more people, because she's level 18. She's very close to promoting. And I guess since Martha isn't going to be doing anything else for a while, we can go to this store, which is very important. Buy all the ballista you want. I mean, you don't need too many, because we are very close to the end of the game, just a few chapters after this. I believe it's... One, two, three more? Uh, three or four if you plan on doing the guidance chapter before the final chapter. But yeah, we are very close to the end, and we're only just now getting a store with Ballistae. Which kind of sucks, I would have preferred it earlier, but at least we have it, so Beck won't be completely useless at the end of the game, and... Honestly, I should have bought more Ballista Bolts. You know, just, just between you and me, I could have used a few more. Oh, wow. Very nice 4% crits. That was actually perfect. And she got strength. Wow, that's, that was actually a really good level up. So yeah, Minerva's kind of kicking ass here. Really wish she did that for the entire game, but oh well. I mean, she's doing it here, and I do use her on a semi-frequent basis. I mean, if Seda didn't exist, she'd probably be my flyer of choice. But sadly, Seda does exist, and Seda's pretty good, especially since she uses the Winged Spear. So for the time being, I'm going to have Lorenz guard the village. Again, there really isn't much of a point at all to doing that, because no thieves are going to appear. But that being said, I just like safety anyway, you know? And I'm not going to use Lorenz much anyway. So, units are going to start spawning here. I really probably shouldn't have put Minerva down right on that fortress, because while it's a good position for everyone to go and attack her, there are going to be a lot of reinforcements soon. And while I wasn't too keen on getting to this area, this spot itself is actually pretty great. I, I do like this chapter overall, and I can't really cross at this point. Well, darn. Oh, darn it. Well, Beck, you're probably not going to be all that useful, sorry. But yeah, this chapter, uh, I believe since I've actually entered the main area, it's about to get a little more, I want to say hectic, but at the same time, I don't think it's too bad. Alright, a bunch of tomes I don't particularly need. And a bunch of staves I don't particularly need. Well, maybe a mend. Not a recover, though. I never need those. They're never really all that necessary, because good cleric will always just heal you to full. Like, usually even with a normal heal staff, they can heal quite a bit of HP, actually, once their magic gets good enough. And at the very least, Lena, very good at that. She does have plenty of magic. Maria as well. She's alright. Not quite as good as Lena, though. Lena is fantastic. Oh, it's not happening just yet. Alright, so we got a few more units spawning in, but nothing we can't take down, right? Oh. <laughs> One strength off, aren't you? Frickin' figures, of course. Anyway, yeah, but not too many units spawning in at the moment, but uh, pretty soon. Pretty soon we're gonna have a whole lot of guys spawning. This should take care of this. Easy enough. Now, I think the hardest part about this is killing those clerics without getting, uh... McCullus aggroed, and I don't want him to actually attack anybody until I get Minerva over there. 
Because as I said before, bosses will only say one line to you because... I don't know. <laughs> That's... It can't be bad programming. More so a bad idea for programming, I guess? Because they had to have done it on purpose, because they did it for both games. But still, it's bad. I don't like that you can only get one quote, because, you know, sometimes you just want everyone to talk to a boss. I mean, granted, there aren't that many plot-important characters who would really have need to talk to the bosses. Uh, definitely not nearly as much as in uh, the Game Boy Advance games, where, again, they actually tried. Oh, jeez, yep, we're starting to get a lot more units spawning in now. And that's why I like this chapter. A whole lot of tough units spawning in, but they're actually kind of easy to manage. Okay, <laughs> they're easy to manage, but also Beck is... not good. <laughs> Look, I don't regret not taking Jake along. I've said it many a times, but Jake is kind of the worst. That being said, though, Beck... underperforming just a little bit. But I swear he was better the first time I played. I think I just got kind of unlucky, so he's not the best. And I mean, in fairness, that paladin was standing on top of a fortress, but at the same time, it's not like I was using the stone hoist. He really should have been hit by that. 58 was kind of a pathetic attempt, really. Alright, so I believe that's actually all our units promoted. Good job, Harden. Sorry you had to be the last one, but at least you got there in the end. Would have sucked if you want the entire game and didn't get promoted, right, Marth and Julian? Wink. I guess, technically speaking, we have yet to see Maria promote, and she still has a chance. She's only two levels off. Now, unfortunately, I did kind of leave her behind, which was a terrible mistake on my part. So, that kind of hinders me just a tiny little bit. But nonetheless, I still have a chance of actually promoting her before the very end. Wow, that guy actually has a lot of HP and resistance, which makes sense, because he is, of course, a paladin, and paladins are kind of known for their resistance. I mean, I guess these games kind of emphasize it. I guess it usually does appear in their descriptions. I don't know, I kind of know them more just for being cavaliers, except they're, uh, better. Alright, Maria will save the day eventually. Don't you worry, she is coming to heal your wounds. She is not stopping for anything. If she sees anything on sale, like any sort of good food or toys, no, she's not going to go for that. She's on a mission to come over to this castle and heal the wounds of all those who need it. She's not stopping for anything. No matter how fantastic that pizza might look, she's not stopping for it. And yeah, that's why I didn't really want to stand on the fortresses, because I blocked a whole lot of reinforcements, which, if you don't want to fight reinforcements, could be a problem. But I kind of do. I mean, in fairness, at this point, everybody but Maria has been promoted, so it's not exactly necessary, but hey, gaining levels is still important. I'm not going to stop doing that. I'm kind of cursing McCullis's range, truth be told. Those clerics are just right in the way. And, of course, there's also the fact that uh, Shadow Dragon doesn't allow you to rescue units. That kind of sucks. That was a thing the Game Boy Advance games did. You could just pull a unit away if they were in danger. That was always pretty useful. Of course, Awakening was also pretty great because it could have pair up, which is basically a similar thing, except kind of the reverse. You go to somebody else's square. But it still was very handy and made knights actually useful because they were actually able to pair up with somebody with high movement, which is pretty nice. All right, well, Marth still can't go to the village because he doesn't have the Star Sphere and Light Sphere on him. Because, of course, the person that does have Star Sphere is Minerva. And I think it's about time for us to clear a pathway to McCullis for her. That should do nicely. And a one, and a two. And, of course, in the other direction, we have Linde. And is it even a question as to whether or not she's going to kill this guy? Well, he is, does have a lot of resistance, but I also have Aura. 
Come on, past me, just do it. Oh, you're, really? I did that? Okay, come on. Why didn't I just use Aura? That would have been a better idea. Past me, what are you even doing? Come on. Aura's not that low on durability. Oh well, it works. Nah, I'm too stubborn. I'm gonna embrace you with an axe. So I'm getting a pretty good feeling that this is gonna go well for me. Yep, something tells me that McCullis really doesn't stand a chance. Of course, just in case, I can always do... this. Even though he couldn't even kill her next turn, because he only does 11 damage. She still had more than 11 left. So this is going to go over pretty well. Oh yeah, heal all you want, but in the end, it's not going to help you. And one, and unfortunately I didn't get a crit. Oh well. Yeah, I don't think your people actually like you that much. Oh yeah, there's the king that kind of murdered his father and then took us over and allied us with Dolor. Yeah, thanks for that, pal. You know, most of the countries who allied with Dolor were kind of idiots. Like, if Grust and Macedon and Grod didn't ally themselves with Medius, none of this would have happened. Dolor really couldn't face the combined might of every country. It's just not something they had the power to do. Dolor would have just been beaten fairly easily. I mean, yeah, sure, they do have Monoquettes, but tough as they are, eventually you get stronger than the Monoquettes. It's not too difficult. Oh well. I suppose Garnef was also a big problem, but uh, now he's not going to be a big problem because I have his big weakness, a different book, and it's going to starlight the hell out of him. Yep, will do. So we got starlight, which I believe only, yep, 13 uses, so that's not a lot of uses. Now, because I don't want this to go on forever, we're going to use the last use of that warp staff to get Marth to the exit. Honestly, it's not really needed. Well, actually, I can think of one thing for sure that you might need the warp staff for. And it is going to come up fairly soon, but not just yet. For now, though, I'm going to be taking Starlight. Don't really need Baloney. And with that done... All right, so Macedon's taken care of. The only opponents we have left are Dolor and Garnuf. And of course, now that we have Garnuf's weakness, it seems like it's a good idea to go after him. After all, he is the biggest threat. In fact, I forget if it's mentioned in game, but he's actually a threat to Medius as well, because he is completely invulnerable and he has Falchion which is Medius' weakness, so I'm going to guess those two don't have the best relationship. That being said, though, Garnif is pretty pressing issue, especially since he has Marth's sister with him, and, as the only surviving member of his family, 
Quite frankly, I don't think we should keep Marth from her any longer, so next time on Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, we rescue what's left of Marth's family. And man, we haven't seen her in so long.